and this is an interesting month. Um, Jeff and I were talking before we started just now, and a lot of this month builds toward a major aspect that we've been talking about for a couple of years at least, and we'll be talking about for a couple of years at least. And the discussion that Jeff and I had before we started tonight was whether the culmination of this aspect on November 1st, the fourth of seven times it occurs over a three-year period, whether the exact occurrence of this on November 1st is where this month leads to, or is it where this month actually kicks off because of reasons we'll explain in a moment. And what Rick is talking about is the square, the tense 90 degree angle between Uranus, the planet of rebellion and revolution and spontaneous Aries and potent, powerful, transformational Pluto in Capricorn. There are seven squares, seven right angles between these two outer planets between 2012 and 2015, and we're coming up on the fourth, fourth one, I believe. Now, what's interesting is that we've talked about this, many people in the astrological community have been talking about it, and yet I think we here, particularly in the United States, have a very clear symbolic expression of this particular aspect. Although the next exact one is on November 1st, this week the sun is triggering this particular pattern. And a fundamental idea of astrology is that slow moving planetary patterns, which are the most important ones, are triggered by faster moving planets. And it's when they're triggered by the faster moving ones that we tend to have events. The sun in Libra, the sign of diplomacy, the sign of accommodation, the sign of let's meet halfway. The sign of if it's okay for you, Jeff, it's, it's okay, okay for, for me. me. And we're all brothers and sisters here in Congress. And yet, that sun in Libra yesterday, I believe, formed a square, a tense right angle with Pluto, power in Capricorn, government. And in a, when is it, two days or so, the sun will oppose Uranus. To the, on tomorrow, on the third. The planet of rebellion. And one of the core meanings of the Uranus-Pluto square is the breakdown of institutions. Uranus is rebellion and liberation. Pluto in Capricorn is about institutions, so we're experiencing here in the United States this institutional breakdown, so much so that the government isn't working. Yeah, I, I'm sure some of you heard today, the, someone recorded the telephone at the Johnson Space Center, when you call it, the, pho the phone machine answers, and that says, um, it says, we cannot take your call, we are closed, that's all. <laughs> So, but, but, but the thing is here, just to pick up on what Jeff was saying, in astrology, Capricorn is the sign of all institutions that have structure. Anything that has basic structure in the world is Capricornian, including whether it's a bridge or a road or a bank or a government, um, and certainly banks and governments are the, you know, kind of the core of the structure in which we live. And Pluto, the planet Pluto, is about gradual upheaval so that those things which have the most structure begin to deconstruct and then need to reconstruct. That in itself is a slow moving 20 year process as Pluto moves through Capricorn. But as Uranus, the planet of lightning striking sudden shock, impulsive, immediate, unexpected, in the moment energy. Uranus in Aries, which is also spontaneous and in the moment, as these two planets move in and out of their squares, that's when this action is the most heightened. And of course, as Jeff said, with the sun moving into opposition, first square yesterday to Pluto, and opposition to Uranus tomorrow, it's like no one no one knows how we got here or how we're going to get out of here, except everyone knows how we got here. 
<laughs> I mean, it's been it's been a it's very coming. slow moving, methodical, you know, uh, dance that's moved us to this moment, and yet now it seems as if there's an impasse, and the impasse is stroke, Uranus, lightning. It's like a nervous. It's like the government is having a stroke, and for a moment, is, there's nothing happening. It's going to need to be revived. And, of course, those who perceive themselves as liberators uh, feel that they're dealing with oppression. And it's very interesting. You could have been in the middle of a, a war protest. I remember back in the 60s, which were triggered by the first Uranus-Pluto conjunction, the late 60s and early 70s, and being out there protesting against the Vietnam War. And yet I understand that there were people in the buildings who thought I was causing trouble and that I was the problem. So rather than trying to wrangle about this politically, I think what you and I can do and how we can benefit from astrology is to recognize within ourselves where we are institutionalized and repressive that's where we're Pluto in Capricorn. What areas of life uh, do we have we demand absolute control and order? And where in our lives are we the rebels? Where are we the Uranus and Aries individuals who are trying to break patterns or free ourselves from elements of control? And I think what a new moon in Libra, and what Libra really has to teach us all the time is, the person on the other side is you. That whatever you're wrestling with, whatever you're fighting with, you've drawn into your life story. It's a projection within your own movie. And we all have an opportunity here, rather than shaking our fists from the right, from the left, from the middle, at those incompetence, those failures. And believe me, I go there. But that's not where astrology can be helpful to us. Astrology doesn't work well as a tool for partisanship. Astrology works really well as a tool for consciousness and personal responsibility. So what we can learn is how we move between places of control and demands for freedom. And in seeing those mechanisms in ourselves, perhaps rather than being caught in a collective social stalemate, we will innovate, we will discover, and we will come up with solutions for ourselves that we hope will trickle up to those in government. Well said. So, taking this again just with a slightly different lean, we have Uranus squaring Pluto. It's within a degree and a half right now, and over the next month, it will become exact. And into that, not only do we have the Sun, which on the first, yesterday, squared Pluto, and then tomorrow, the third, will oppose Uranus, but the day after that, on Friday, the Moon moves into Libra, lines up with the Sun. Remember, once a month, we have a new Moon, that is the alignment of the Moon and the Sun, that's the beginning of the emotional cycle. And so on Friday, the new moon in... Thank you for another one of those. <laughs> the new moon in Libra actually kicks off this square again, even more personally, because now the moon is involved. Right. And, and because the moon is emotional, the moon is extremely personal, a new moon in Libra is always about a fresh start in relationships. And this fresh start in relationships is a fresh start in the middle of a tornado, a hurricane, and an earthquake, all happening at the same time. And it might look like that's happening, like you said, it might look like we are trying to remain placid in the midst of this tornado or hurricane, and I think, and Jeff said this, but I'm going to come back at this from a personal point of view, it's important to understand that all tornadoes and all hurricanes and all earthquakes are of our own making, including this relationship earthquake or hurricane, which is really about how do we find balance and freedom and transformation um, somehow holding this position, knowing that we can't hold on to anything. Right, and the key to understanding any relationship 
is to look at the relationships within ourselves as individuals. I mean, who doesn't have contradictory drives? Who doesn't have some areas of confusion, some areas of rigidity? And when we own it, not as victims, not as perpetrators, but simply as active agents of consciousness, we put ourselves in the middle of the Libra scales and we have or we can find the balance to move in whatever direction we need to at any given moment of time. But in ordinary reality, that means what we get at sort of base level of awareness or sleepiness, relationships are likely to be shaken. Yeah, and this pattern really is one of the most potent pieces of that's going to happen this month, even though, as we said earlier, the aspect between Uranus and Pluto grows closer and closer and closer together. And we just might want to put in the back of our minds that every time planets over the next few years and over the last couple of years move through any of the season starting signs, Aries, spring, Cancer, summer, uh, Libra, autumn, Capricorn, winter, that's when this square is activated and with the sun and moon moving through this square, it's the tail end of this activation for this season. But we might just project ahead in our minds and think about when all these planets, Mercury and Venus and the sun and, and the moon, of course, is whizzing around once a month and eventually Mars, they're all going to come through again around the holiday season. Um, this year when things are activated again. I know that's down the road a little bit, but just put that out there in your mind somewhere. Yeah, but if you, if you survived Christmas last year, you'll probably do okay this year because these aspects were triggered at that time as well. Yes. So if you've been able to maintain some semblance of civility in your family, great. Now, the other piece of this is Libra is about alliances. Sometimes they're temporary alliances, but I think we're likely to see some political shifting around this in terms of people's identification. I mean the politicians' identification with the, the Tea Party sort of pulling from the right. There are more moderate Republicans who are in a kind of an uncomfortable position. It's going to be quite interesting because symbolically this has the potential for having a longer term effect in terms of shifting the American political structure. One, oh, one other thing, I'm sorry Rick. No. One other thing I wanted to mention is the lines, for those of you who are unfamiliar with astrology in this level, are aspects or significant angles between planets. They're the internal wiring or the links among these different planetary uh, positions. And we use orbs or allowances, that is to say, astrologers say, for something to be called an opposition like this, it has to be within X amount of degrees, usually eight. But the, the reason I'm pointing this out is that Jupiter, the largest true planet, is pretty darn close to a square. Actually, it's got a thin red line here indicating that it's wide of the exact square, but close enough to and, be in the game. And it will get thicker day by day because the sun moves about a degree each day. And so over the following week, the sun will move into square to Jupiter. We'll talk about that more in a moment. But good point, Jupiter is still part of this whole complex of energies. Jupiter, the planet of overdoing, overstating your, your case. Jupiter, the planet of my philosophy, is more important than reality. Join Rick Levine and Jeff Jower for their annual forecast seminar at beautiful Brighton Bush Hot Springs, Oregon from January 10th through 12th next year. For details, go to brightonbush.com. That's B-R-E-I-T-E-N-B-U-S-H dot com. Join astrologers Jeff Jower, Alan Oaken, Aaron Sullivan, and Lauren Albandian for the Wisdom of Astrology Conference from March 29th to April 4th, 2014 in Santa Fe, New Mexico. For details and registration, go to alanoaken.com or click the link on the front page of StarIQ.com.